All right. I guess that should do it. We should be live. Surprise, surprise. We are starting the invasion. It's a fight against the Fellowship Meta. Very strong opponent. And I just sent in my mediocre formation who got obliterated as it seems. So there you see, that's my good old undying. He first hit against the leftovers of this dying formation. What do we have here? I'm definitely out leveled. Level 41 versus 47. And of course, we are fighting against it is a scout's mail with lots of initiative, right? Deftness. 1.0 gear. Just for Sauron to have insane initiative for the Madness proc. Damn, I wish I, I hadn't con converted my 1.0 scout's mail into 2.0. Now this is an unfair advantage 1.0 people get if they withhold their conversion. And there's nothing I can do against it. Oh baby, it's a Zenith level even. Zenith level, Biskir, best special effect dying. Like there couldn't be the worst opponent I could fight. That's that's the strongest dine I have seen so far. Best in slots, special effect, it's might once more. Okay. Let's reinforce and try this again. And also let's check out the last formation that destroyed us. Level 47, man, all of these people have been fed. There is this little trick, right, where you just um, go go outside of your warband. You practically, I think it's betrayal. You just go outside of your fellowship and then you are a target for everybody. And then everybody is just sending all of their level 40 formations without any gear and skills against you. And you just one shot them one after the other, getting fat XP to outlevel everybody else as fast as possible. That's a little trick. I don't like it at all. I enjoyed it much more with the old leveling system because nowadays everybody's just abusing this feeding mechanic. And if you don't get fed, you cannot level as fast as the other persons who are getting fed, which is also why I am still at level 41. So Skullhelm, Law of the Arcane. Mogul Blade, definitely one of the best choices for her high focus damage. Zenith level 1. Scout's Mail, but this time the 2.0 version and there is a huge difference between 1.0 deafness and 2.0 with just agility. You see the other one with 1.0 had above 60 initiative. That's crazy. Dine. Oh, this time with sharp blade instead of mm, might. And that's the white with agility as well. Got it. Got it. Strong opponents. It's never a good idea to send your commanders one by one. L let's wait for our buddies to send the big wave and then let's join the wave. And oh, by the way, I, I probably need to check my sound. Because whenever I check my sound, sometimes it is messing my setup. Let's go into the audio.
audio settings. Microphone? No, that's not it. Sound. There it is. Oh no, actually the sound settings are fine. 20 minutes for reinforcement. Oh, it's getting dark in the room. Let me turn on the light and also get some water. Be right back. Back to the action. What I would like to do is check all the battle reports when we did the big wave attack here. Okay. <clears throat> Filter. Fellowship. And then let's see what everybody has to offer. We have a Castaro main formation here. But wait, that's that's the second hit. Let's go to the first hit. Oh wow! He has giant units. He is out leveling the enemy commander. Maybe not the fairest report compare. But I'm curious about the gear. It's Law of the Arcane, probably the number one effect for Kestaro. I'm wondering which effect is better for him. Is it Law of the Arcane? or agility since he is a very s slow commander right would it be much better to you know like come up for his weaknesses which is lack of speed and fill that gap with agility plus initiative do we have some castaro mains in the chat who, who could just uh, give us a comparison like did you compare Law of the Arcane with a full set of agility? If yes, let me know what result was better. Berserker's Raymond initiative, yeah, I agree. He kind of wants that, right? He's very slow. But also not neglecting focus. He still wants tons of focus to boost his focus damage. And I like his relic. I think this is one of the better relics in the game. 40% chance for focus damage death plus a certain percentage when dealing focus damage. So you have three focus damage dealing skills. And whenever they activate, you have a 40% chance to get a damage in. Sauron, which one is he running? He is running the 2.0 version. Of course with agility. This is what the cool kids run nowadays. Plus an initiative for Sauron. We have a war cry for Lord. And also his relic. I I wonder what would happen if you were to give your lords a gigantic hammer with frenzy. Because you have a chance to proc normal attacks twice per round, right? The 1.0 gigantic hammer. Now imagine that collaborating with this special effect pinned down. You could probably... Well, there is the possibility of triggering this relic effect twice per round. You have to be very lucky. And I'm not sure if there is something like bad luck or good luck protection within this game that is forbidding you to have too much luck or too bad of luck if there is something like that what i'm meaning is imagine you're so lucky that you always get two shots of this in each round very unlikely but if there isn't any bad luck protection it could happen right 
eventually it could happen. All right, Sauron fully concentrated on focus build. R3, Voice of Saruman, with a top R0 title, max out. So, insane. This, this is a lovely formation. 100k damage from Lord, 90k from Kestaro. Closely followed by Saruman's damage. Next up, Witch King. I've been seeing mainly two Witch Kings. On the battlefield the first one is a hybrid witch king and the other one is a tank witch king and i'm still withholding my witch king guide until i have seen enough of those most shining witch kings on the battlefield and once i'm done i would like to make a guide about that but this is what i have been seeing so far tank witch kings and also the what was it hybrid witch kings there is a lot more, but those two were the most convincing when it comes to outcomes. Let's check this type of Witch King. Which one are you running? Definitely the Fell Beasts for the debuff to support Sauron. Followed by some focus damage. He's a hybrid, right guys? He deals some mediocre focus damage with his top R0, Lord of the Nazgul, and his R3. And he also helps out with debuffs. Three things he does. Debuffing. Uh, focus damaging. And also stunning with this special effect here. Level 10 effect. And also the level 5 effect from Lord of the Nazgul. Stun. Mediocre focus damage. And debuff. That is the Witch King in a nutshell. And he is running the Witch King like I do. That's the same Witch King I, which I use to support Sauron. And he has a full agility set for his Sauron. Crazy. Ooh, he was even lucky enough to have a full set of might. I envy him. Mm, no, 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 no. It's all right. That is that is exactly the same build I am running, and he has mountain trolls. I was using mountain trolls as well, but then I switched to guardians because I couldn't sustain a long fight like this. I was running out of resources. Next, all right, next report. I want to see which king report. Shall we also look into King of Man report? Okay, 1.0 gear, unwavering, task of pride, fifth lane. Isn't that crazy that 1.0 gear is still around? I think the, the game devs should completely get rid of 1.0 gear. Everybody should be at the same level. Everybody should be at the same version of the game. Nobody should have special treatment. But 1.0 gear existing is special treatment more or less. And look at this. Cask of Sub Submerged Eye with Last Resort. That is crazy. From round 6, Commander's Damage Dealt plus 30%. This, this is huge, man. This is so much damage boost. I think if, if there is one item that you can consider best item from 1.0, it may be this this item, the cask of submerge eye with last resort. The damage boost is it's it's just insane. And correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't Baron have a skill which is also activated in the later rounds? 
from round four onward, shapeshifts and deals 666 damage physical damage to three formations, gains attack until the end of battle. Oh, okay, so this activates on round four, and the cask of submerged eye gives you that 30% damage boost on round six. So that is a good thing, because imagine if this or if the cask of submerged eye with that special effect was on the same round like skin changer that would have been so devastating but still he benefits from other skills like and when whale chieftain sooner or later the casks damage buff will give this a lot of boost and of course enemy of the orcs as well fair enough that man this is scary and i kind of regret having yeah, transformed my 1.0 gear, everything, into 2.0. I should have waited. That's the sad truth. And his dine has... Luminance Blade. Yeesh! Look at that. A buff 250 attack. That is just dominating. You guys are crazy, man. Like, people with enough patience, they were definitely paid off like this. Next up. Next up. 2.0 gear. 2.0. I'm kind of hunting the 1.0 gear people. With their crazy... Oh, oh, just, just um, pretend you didn't see this report. Now, who is that? Who is this Lokua guy? Ah, my gear. I have sp stopped spending, guys. I have completely stopped spending. This is my... Like, all the gear I have transformed into 2.0. And after 2.0 was life, I stopped spending. The only full set I have in combat is for my shadow with Perseverance. Uh, next. Did we check, check out Gollum's gear? Was this a 1.0 gear? No, it's not. But still. Zenith level 9, baby. You're crazy. And people are running war drummers. What special effect do they bring? Each round's chance to remove a debuff from three allied formations. Uh, I'm taking action each round. Two allied formations deal an additional damage on the next turn. Oh, so they mainly run these war drummers because of the 20% damage buff. I see. Yeah, man. But are they tanky? Defense just 30. Not really tanky. Next up. Or shall I... Shall we check if we are... Okay, 7 minutes until reinforcement arrives. Let's check the new reports meanwhile. Ganja Kaya. Where's this Alucard? Oh, wow. Skullhelm. Skullhelm is going nuts. With Dine. Show me what you got. Warcry. Zenith level 4. Dark Ranger. Oh, wait a second. Let me see if I still have that graph ready for you guys. I have it, okay. Let me bring this over here, guys. Okay, I, I wanted to find out how much damage potential each commander has, and I started making a spreadsheet like this, you know, with all the skills of the commanders. And let's see, like, the highest evil side damage leading commander was Skullham by far. She has a potential of um, 
well, assuming that you max out all of her skills, the potential would be, you know, like close to 900% elemental damage. We are talking about focus and poison damage. But of course, your points won't be enough to max out all of her skills. And if you have to decide which of her skills do the most damage, two skills are there in particular. Her R5 being Dark Ranger, dealing 2700 percentage poison and focus damage, and her Executioner. That is her bottom respect zero skill. And if I had to max out her skills, I would go with like Dark Ranger and Executioner. Definitely. These two skills give her the most value. Followed by her R3, Nazgul. And my leftover points would go into Lord of the Wolves. Okay, this is just theory crafting. Now I want to see if the player has applied that logic. He definitely went with Dark Ranger. He also went with, with Nazgul. So there is some, some difference to, to what I was thinking. And I think I know why. Because Nazgul... When you max it out, you also have a chance to stun, and stun is huge, right? Stun is just shutting down damage for that one round. Or it, it wasn't completely shutting it down, it is at least delaying the damage for one round after. Imagine if you're fighting a Dine and he wants to hit you with one of his big skills. If you stun him, he cannot hit you on round two, let's assume. The hit would come on round two and you were to stun him on round two you delay that hit which will then happen on round three so this is probably why he is maxing out nazgul to get the stun and then leftover points go to executioner yeah i can definitely understand why and whatever leftover points you have go to lord of the nazgul now you also benefit already a lot just by spending one point into this to have it work for you as soon as possible. So this has definitely been a good lesson for me. You know, I had a long break and because of that break, I'm trying to catch up with what the meta is right now. This time a full set of might, nothing out of the ordinary. End up with agility? Oh no, it's evasive action. Again, if the white is being played with either evasive action or agility. I think the agility is because he's trying to outspeed Sauron before he gets to cast the madness and steal his white council, was it? Or was it white rider? But no chance if the Sauron has this scout mail with deafness 1.0, you, you cannot outspeed him. That's a hard one. I feel your pain, bro. I feel that pain. Damn, that's that's a good skull helm here. This fight looks even. Those levels, hey, one of the few fights which we can consider even. So here we have a Tank Sauron. And I have heard that Tank Sauron also does make sense. Um, boosting the focus stat on him doesn't really make sense because it's not scaling strong enough. Like the scaling isn't worth mentioning. That's why you can neglect focus on him. Instead, go max command and max unit defense. I have been told that for some reason, unit defense, units get much more attacked than commanders. And after the units are dead, then the commanders get more focused. So I think that is the reason why if you are a tank, you try to boost the unit defense, then command to make them even more bulky because command is also giving damage mitigation and the same goes for the rest of his gear yeah everything is revolving around unit defense 
This is something I wanted to try out, but now we get to see it in action. It's the typical meta build. Debuffing Sauron with the Madness proc. Madness and Stun proc. Lovely. Seriously, this is lovely. I was curious how this would perform. Now we know. Dying. Warcry. Golden skin. Chieftain's gaze. Okay. Gimli. With his relic, right? Gimli probably received. Aha! Storms of Baratua. Yeah. That's what he needs to unlock the keen eye effect later. He, yeah, just needs some focus for the keen eye. But do you really need it? Because the meta right now isn't revolving around evasion. Nobody, or almost no one has evasion. It's just Gilgalad. That's it, right? And in non-RP, we almost never see Gil being played. Wait a second. Debuffing Sauron, right? End of the Grey, also with agility. All right. Let me check if my reinforcements has arrived. It has. Yeah. And I should definitely be ready for the next wave. But until the wave is ready once more, can continue with the report. We want to understand the meta in non-RP. Yeah, yeah, I know the golden trio is reigning supreme. We have Dine, Beon, Gandalf the White, and also Sauron. I think that is the number one formation on non-RP. You may swap Sauron. Or a tanky commander. I think Frodo and Sam are a good tanks. Also, Isildur is a good tank. I haven't seen Isildur a lot. In 1.0, he was a good damage dealer with King of All the Dunedain. He was countering ranged units hardcore. But nowadays, he has become a tank with his top R0 ring bearers and r5 last alliance and that's it that's that's re really it he's just a tank now but i promised that i wouldn't try over the 1.0 times so let's not stay for too long at isildur or my nostalgia is going to kick in not today nostalgia Okay, what about this report? End of the white wave. Fortitude. Damn, I've been hearing rumors about Fortitude being maybe even the number one effect in the game right now. Physical damage being reduced by minus 10%. That is huge. Since the meta revolves around physical damage anyway. You know, Dine, Beorn. Lords, Shadow, Gimli, Commanders with physical damage are number one. And with that, you just counteract it. And it's it's passive. You have it active on each round. It's just great. Perseverance. Hmm. Um, yeah, definitely one of the okay-ish effects. Orcish Greyhound. Oh. Blazing Tongue, Warcry. 
war cry and um, wait a second let me use my skill sheet again here war cry goes hand in hand with nazgul it is burst damage right it's also kind of nice for executioner because that too is early round damage as you see here so these two skills benefit the most from war cry dark ranger also benefits from it but i think the most benefiting one is nazgul let's jump back oh yeah and D dark ambush the the relic also benefits from it okay dine war cry Beon. Fortitude, lovely. Agility. Tank Sauron. Another Tank Sauron. Lovely. Then, how about checking out this one? Because this is a fair fight, levels are close. He has a tank Sauron versus a agility Sauron. Wait, 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 wait. Divide and conquer Sauron versus agility Sauron. Of course, there is always luck involved in these fights. You know, who has madness proc in his favor? Did you target the right commander with your madness? Did you steal white council, white rider? You know, it's also very luck based with these Sauron fights it's uh, it's hard to say one really does have to read into the report and see who was targeted with the madness and only if both Saurons target Gan of the White with their madness and the madness procs in both of their favor can we really have a a result with which we can play with Uh, 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 uh. let's look for oh wait 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 what about the wave Do we have a wave? okay we have a wave i was feeling the wave let's participate in that attack three minutes march time we can go back to reading I hope someone within my fellowship will hit the enemy one second before I hit them. Um, guys, I'm counting on you. Filter. Okay. Vanilla. Vanilla. Level 47. Ooh, we see Kamul. I haven't seen Kamul in PvP. Like, this is a rare case. Kamul? Does mediocre focus damage. He has two skills to do so, right? Let me let me get this one again. Kamur. That's the that's the damage chart for Kamur. Around 5k-ish elemental damage. Also Nazgul with the stun effect. It's just mediocre damage, right? Not the best. It's a mini witch king it's a uh, mini castaro even agility set eh uh, 1.0 gear i see do we have another 1.0 gear oh baby tactical maneuvers oh we haven't seen this one in a long time for the first three rounds damage taken by the commander's formation unit minus 18 percent this is money what other special effects do we have i already forgot about the all of these 1.0 special effects one of it if it no fine so commander attack plus 30 that is a huge one Fortitude of Dwarfs. 
maybe an RP, but a non-RP less so. But tactical maneuvers, definitely one of the best ones. So fine and tactical maneuvers would be my my choice. Task of Pride, unwavering. 90% chance to gain stun immunity, that's money, because with the Nazgul skill, with the Witch King and his Lord of the Nazgul are top zero skill, you want to be safe against stun. Lovely Cask of Pride. Warcry. Mirror Mini Suppression. Yeah. Insane, guys. Whoever had the patience to wait with the item transformation, conversion, is now living the dream with these formations. Vanilla, good job, bro. I'm kind of jelly of what you what you have achieved here. Your patience did pay off. Okay, attack. I'm already dead. What has happened to me? I... Okay, I'm out-leveled, but not just only that. Zenith level 6. Best in slot gear plus special effect. We are talking best in slot. Bayorn. He has... Ooh, it's, it's the nasty Bayorn. That's... I think that that is the scariest Bayorn I have seen so far. Sauron. Deafness. Okay. I'm far away from best in slot gear, guys. Also, none of my comps is on Zenith level. I think my shadow is my whole pride. The only commander with the highest respect level and also a full set bonus. No other commander has that luxury. Oh, me? Oh, oh, I have to correct. It's my Sauron who also has a fortitude set. Might. It's not really a tank Sauron. I have focus on him mainly and some hybrid ish gear with the high else helmet of Thorian belt. It's just my leftover gear, right? That's that's the best gear I had. Let's go back and reinforce. Oh, wait a second. Our... Our siege was sniped? Did he, did he use eagles? Nothing but eagles? Yeah. Flying units to snipe the siege. What a smart one. Did he also snipe Thari? Okay, I, I really need to watch that this should never happen again. People have learned to snipe our siege with flying units. He did it on Thari and also on me. I see, mister. And I must say, I already start hating this flying mechanic. You know, you assume that you are safe since you are sitting here surrounded by your bodies. But that doesn't really have any meaning if the person comes flying by from the air, bypasses all the ground defense. And directly hits your siege. Is it just me? Or do you also not um, appreciate that mechanic? Since I have a lot of resources, let's go with Felbeast. Come on. And NetEase still didn't implement the button, which is just remembering your last uh, troop conscription. You know, like I don't always want to go, go to the units and then scale the right amount, 
which I would like to conscript. There should be a button, which is kind of like a memory button. You just click on it and you produce the exact same number of units you were producing last time. That shouldn't be too much to ask for an Atlas. Little quality of life changes. But let's go back. Let's go back to the fight. I want to see more of the meta in these fights here. You know, everybody is up to speed. These guys know what they are doing. And they also have the money and gear to support that. Another fight against Skullhelm. Damn! Oh, first Bard fight. I have never seen him in action, but it's purple gear. Dragon shooter. On round 3, 6 and 9 launches an attack that deals physical damage once from maintenance. But the commander will no longer launch normal attack from round 3 onwards. Immediately inflicts the full damage of the bleed effect active on the target. Effective up to 3 times. 20% chance to inflict mad. Of Dale? No, that's just two boost. Two boost is garbage. Descended of Erion. Deals 90% physical damage to four enemy formations and reduces the damage dealt by the target formation's commander by 10% for one round. Effect modified by attack stat. I think this skill could have been OP if it wasn't for the two rounds of cooldown. If it had just one round of cooldown, I can see Bart become, becoming pretty much meta. But with two rounds on cooldown, it means this skill will only be active three times in the battle. Maybe this is why we don't see him a lot on the battlefield. At level 5, has a 30% chance to inflict the bleed effect that deals 40% damage to the target and takes the effect four times. Yeah? That sounds cool. Oh man. If he was to max it out. 250% physical damage. But only against one enemy formation. It also inflicts a bleed effect that deals 40% damage to the target and takes effect four times. At level 5, skill damage dealt by one formation's commander. Minus 20% for one run. Effect modified by the attack stat. When it says attack stat, does it mean plus attack for the commander or attack for your unit? Because that needs to be specifically stated here, which it isn't. So we probably have to read into the reports just to figure this mechanic out. Effect modified by a texter. But yeah, he's playing him defensively anyway. Unit defense. What gear did this Baron have? Namely... So he has mediocre gear. One can say this isn't the fairest fight. 1.0 gear here. Oh, deafness, initiative. He wants to make sure his buffs and debuffs go in first before Sauron gets a piece of the cake. Oh, wow. 51 agility Sauron. He does it with Reach of the River Mark, Berserker's Raymond, Call of the Forest, Mera's Reigns. This is one of the fastest Saurons without 1.0 gear I have seen so far. So I think if I can get any equipment and can consider best in slot in 2.0 for Sauron, it would be this. I would try to get golden gear with the highest initiative and that's it he, like th this guy is already ahead of me this is something i had theory crafted and i want this too well done dine might 
Evasive Action, Skullhelm, Warcry. People really love Warcry on Skullhelm. Uh, next one, we see an Isildo report, one of the rare ones, right? That's something we don't always get to see. Unit attack, unit attack. Yeah, the, the better choice would probably be unit defense, but if you don't have that gear, what other choice do you have? If that's the only one being defensive. There was a weapon that was boosting unit defense a lot. Which one was it? Let me check in the mathems. So for a tanky Isildur or let's even say Frodo, I think the gear I'm about to recommend works for both of these tanks. Frodo and Isildur. As my weapon of choice, I would run with the Reckoning. Right, because it has command and highest unit defense. We are talking about Sam and Isildur. Next one. No, not that one. Was it? Yeah, it was the High Elf Hallberg. That would be my chest piece. And when it comes to accessories, the, the Silver Heart, he already has it. And then as a helmet, was it the cask of the submerged isle? Yeah, that one. I think that is the best troop boosting tank gear. Isildur and Frodo, definitely for them. How long does the reinforcement take? 14 minutes. God. And dive deeper into the reports i want to dive deep into the de reports guys that's what i need okay witch king i love analyzing witch king reports because you have so many ways of playing a witch king in a formation he is running the same like i do uh, you do mediocre focus damage with these two skills and also stun while debuffing in order to support your Sauron, in order to make him go first. It doesn't always work out like we thought it would. You rely on luck a, a lot on luck. The minus initiative of the Witch King needs to land on the enemy Sauron before he gets to proc madness on you. And this Sauron already has high initiative. 1.0 gear once more. insane do we have more witch king reports you know one of my buddies one of my fellowship mates had an insane witch king robin was it was it him okay so robin is also running the same kind of witch king relying on focus damage mediocre focus damage with the stunts and the debuff and I thought that's that's a great way of playing the Witch King. It is. It's one of the possibilities of playing him. But the other one I have seen, which is convincing me even more, was the one from my buddy. It was our our Japanese Witch King. Where where are you, friend? Where are you? Abadoom. So oh, so here. Oh, this might be too old yeah it's already expired abadu we need more of your reports please keep them coming because what i have seen with your hybrid build was insane i want to see more to have a back and forth comparison with the elemental damage build and also there is a tank witch king 
So three Witch Kings on my radar right, right now. The one from Robin, Elemental Damage. The hybrid one from our Japanese Witch King. And the Tank Witch King. After having analyzed them a lot, only then will I speak about a guide for the Witch King. I still yet have to see the Tank Witch King. And it kind of makes sense to, to let him do the tank work since he has very high initiative. He already has a lot of initiative. You don't really have to worry about it with your gear. Instead, you can focus on other things like plus command, plus defense on your units. That way you have a tanky Witch King. And you still go first with your stunts, with your CC. So, a quick, tanky, CCing commander, Tank Witch King. I don't have him right now in that build. I do play the elemental damage build. Like, look at the initiative difference, the base initiative. Sauron, 30. Witch King, 48. And I didn't really give him tons of initiative plus gear. Only the Obsidian Dagger plus 2, Signet of the Barrows plus 2, and that's it. So he has a total of plus 4 initiative from my gear. That's, that's almost nothing. Undying, also very slow, 35 initiative. Shadow, around the same. What about Bluets? Yeah, same range. Skullham, one of the faster commanders, okay. Let's read some more reports. Hits are coming in. Oh, another Witch King. Interesting. Okay, okay. Without clicking on the Witch King, I think he is playing a hybrid Witch King where he also relies on his uh, Black Captain skill. He has Berserkers, they deal plus 20% increased damage than the first rounds, which goes hand in hand with the Witch King's Black Captain skill. Now let's see if that theory is correct. Did he go Black Captain? No, he didn't go Black Captain. That is a surprise. But I have seen some people do it like that, because this, you know, for the first two rounds, also Urukais, up to four formations, have a chance for dual blows, 75% chance, and all of these units have, what was it? Uh, plus 20% plus increased damage. I have seen someone running that. Maybe it was Abadoom. It was crazy. And I want to see it again. But... Yeah, the um, plus focus boosting spec. Yeah. But that's not really what the, the Witch King specializes in, right? The, the elemental damage is just mediocre. It's not out of this world. Sauron. What kind of Sauron? Agility. Congrats. He has a full set. Warcry for Lourdes. With best in slot here. Lovely Lords man. One point O gear. Man, this this is this is so cheesy. Just by giving Sauron Scout's Mail in the classic version with deafness is already making him good enough in order to steal White Council or, or White Rider from Gandalf the White. That's... That shouldn't be a thing, man. Like, people who have started playing 2.0 don't have access to that strategy. That alone is unfair. And that alone is making people with 1.0 gear some some elite unit. A group of elite people. 
Because there is no other way you can compete with a Sauron with that high initiative. You just can't. It's just too much of a value. Okay. Next, next analysis. Um, I think we haven't seen this dime. This dime. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No set bonus. But he's definitely aiming for best and sword gear. We have a tanky Gandalf. Hmm, <sighs> Mera's reign. Plus defense. Plus defense. Mm -hmm. And something we don't see every day. Azru Kor. The commander who also deals kinda okay-ish elemental damage, burn damage. When the commander's formation unit deals physical damage, gain follow-up damage. Physical damage body. I'm not sure if Spirit of the Wood is the right choice here. Because... Attack random... No, that's not it. Poison damage of... No, that's not it. It should be this. Normal attacks inflict an additional 20%. Oh, they have changed it. I think in 1.0 they did nothing but focus damage. But here, in 2.0, they did normal attacks. Plus on top of it, focus damage. So that way it also makes sense to trigger the follow-up. To have a chance to deal also burn damage. That is a good idea. But how does it work out? Also a chance for dual blows for his ranged units? Yeah, that, this, this definitely is interesting. Actually, I want to see... I want to see this guy in action with a full enemy army. So C1N. Where else do we see this commander hit? C1N. He has a cool Azru core. Yeah, Galhelm. And I want to see more from that Azru core. All right. I am curious about the gear once more. Dine. No full set. Okay. They on 1.0 gear? No, no 1.0. Uh, oh, a tanky Sauron. Tank Sauron. Wow, full set of might. Fortitude. That is a tanky kind of the white. Thorin, wow. I haven't seen this guy in action for a long time. But yeah, his army wasn't full. That's not really a fair comparison. Do we have more Azru Kor? Give me, give me Azru Kor. Let's check out this. Seems pretty even. Yeah, two levels behind. Blazing Tarn. Perseverance. Oh yeah, fortitude. Fight and conquer. And is this another tanky Sauron? Well, one tank here. He was a bit unlucky with the gear because only Durant's plate is boosting the tankiness. Then Gun of the White. Evasive action. No full set for Dine. But yeah, 1.0 Scouts Mail. Again, deafness. So unfair. NetEase, you gotta do something about the 1.0 gear. 
you have created a two-class society within your own game. It's really a two-class society with that uh, gear. You know what? I think we have enough reinforcement. Okay, one minute. We, we can have one more attack before I call it a day. And I hope I can catch a wave. I want to attack with my bodies. But the target for today is to proceed all the way to... Well, ideally... Um, Karas Galatorn is the way to go. Where was it? To the north? Oh, oh. oh no, it's not here. Please, game, do not crash on me. I miss the good old days where Sunint was a beast. And guys, what do you think? Do you believe that the game devs may return to the 1.0 environment if they see that this version of the game isn't really giving them the revenue they were hoping for? Because inside me, there is still hope that in time, the game devs may go back to the old version. And why shouldn't they, if this isn't working out like they thought it would? But then, they may drop the game completely, right? They may think, well, we have done everything within our power. We couldn't get the money we were hoping to get. We did it with 1.0. It led us nowhere. We tried it with 2.0. It led us to nowhere. If, if they were thinking like that, they there is a high risk they may drop development on this game completely. That's my biggest fear. But instead of having them drop the game, I would rather prefer going back to the 1.0 times. Give us 1.0, man. Imagine 1.0, like the, the old PvP system of 1.0. You know, like, with you can have three units in your army, you have only one commander, that is leading the whole army. You have the sub skills in your skill set. Give me that PvP system with the 2.0 marching system. You know, you have marching, you have occupying, you maybe even have um, flying units flying over terrain. I'm not against that mechanic. Imagine if you had that mix, like the best versions of both worlds merged together. That version of the game would be actually the version I would enjoy the most. We could have had it if they wouldn't drop 1.0, if they hadn't dropped 1.0. But here I am, ranting again about the past. I, <laughs> I tend to do that a lot without even noticing. Okay, let's get in position. Let this be our last attack. Before we call it a day. Man, I'm just so sad about what this game could have been. I already summarized what a superior version we could have received if there was a mix between two versions. Gosh, I would have so liked to see that. And while the game devs kept bringing out new commanders and balancing the already existing commanders on a monthly basis. Can you imagine a world where they did that? Wouldn't that be like the best flourishing ground for Rise to War? Did, 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 I, just, did I just fix Rise to War's problem? Did I just fix that problem, man? Do they just need to realize the things I just mentioned to fix the game? To make Rise to War great again? I think yes.
Witch King. I think it's a good idea to balance a commander every month. Yeah. That's it, mate. We, we just need commander balancement. On a regular basis. So many commanders right now that are just sitting on the bank, being useless. Do we need that? No. Can we change that? Yes. But is Nettie doing something against it? Unfortunately, no. Not right now. Alright, boys. Are we ready for one collaborative attack? Let's let's do it all together. Okay, boys, shall we go for one last march for this day? Occupy. Here I go. And I hope my buddies are also collaborating. Because if not, I have to abort this attack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Anybody? Mm -mm 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 -mm. No, going in alone is a bad idea. L let's wait for one more wave. And in the meantime, we do what we always do, which is learning. Last season I managed to get Undying to rank 1. Should I invest in him? I was playing as evil, but I take a break now. Um, My friend, the Undying is just a mediocre solution. He isn't the best when it comes to commander damage. You have better choices, and to name you a few. If you play role-playing, like evil side role-playing, you should prefer Lourdes over Undying. You should also prefer Shadow over Undying. Those two commanders are much better in dealing damage. If you don't have Shadow or and Lourdes, then you may use Undying as your filling in damage dealer. Does this make sense to you, mate? So if you have Shadow and Lourdes on Respect 10, Definitely focus on these two commanders. They are S-tier damage dealers. And um, actually, let me share you my corrected uh, evil side damage dealer tier list. I have something prepared here. I think it will be a good help to you, my friend. Um, Where is it? Nope, that's my 1.0 version. I have to find the... 2.0 tier list. Come on, tier list. My account. There it is. All right, I'm going to show it to you. Okay. You can see the tier list now, right? Um, but this also isn't the corrected one, but I'm going to correct it now. Lourdes? Gosh, why? Export image? No. Create the skill list? Was it create? Yeah. So now I can alter some things here. Um, you definitely... Oh yeah, that's the corrected version. You see, Shadow and Lourdes are S-tier damage dealers. This is what is just the matter right now. Undying is one of the less good damage dealers, but still, if you don't have these two, you can't work with the Undying. 
E2 deals physical damage. If you don't have the Undying and also these two T2 damage dealers, you may even use Axel. E2 has lots of physical damage. And I think every team needs a Sauron, right? Without Sauron, it just doesn't work. So let, let's go back. Let's see if my friends are initiating. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I think um, something is happening here. People are gathering. We may have another wave, wave going on here. I love Axok. He is my secret love. I try to rank him up just for fun. Yeah, it's it's a smart solution right now. You you can't do anything wrong with investing into Axok. Come on, guys. Let, let's have one big attack. One wave attack. So Ezra can chill out a bit. And I am working on a Witch King guide, guys. I'm still waiting until I have analyzed the three kinds of Witch Kings. I'm still not done with the analysis. I want to see some more from this Azru core. Hmm, what is happening here? This Sauron was probably outsped by this one. Yeah, you see that? You see the classic Scouts mail? You see the two class system? If you have 1.0 gear, you will always have the edge over your enemy. If you don't have 1.0 gear, well, unlucky you, you should have played when this game was still in the 1.0 version. There is no chance for you to get that item late. You needed to play the game much earlier. It is your mistake for not being in this game earlier. And NetEase is punishing you for your laziness. Yes. Did I say that out loud? Well, it is the truth. Ooh. Baby. Mm-mm. That's juicy. Nazgul, right? Because of the stun? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see. Perseverance. War cry. So this Skalam has war cry. The other one had which effect? War cry and okay, war cry. Seems like she loves war cry. Are we attacking? Oh, we are attacking. Let, let's go. People are mass attacking and I'm not even noticing it. This is our last attack, guys. I'm gonna call it a day after this one. Let's just quickly analyze what is about to happen. Come on, we're gonna hit the Muma. Boom, we got destroyed.
Okay, what did we hit here? Um, oh yeah, it's one of the gods, Rain. But before we we hit deeds, let's check out two level difference, and also his skull helm. Wow, war cry, another war cry, Zenith level three, Zenith level three, Dine, full set off, sharp blade, Sauron with agility. Yeah, that's. I have nothing against this. I can't do anything against this. Full set the Gamo. I'm going to add this into my personal report. But I also want to check out our buddies. Maybe there is... Okay. Some PvP reports we haven't seen so far. Uh, might. Mixed. 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 Warcry Dine. Law of the Arcane. Mm. Fortitude. Agility. Yeah, that's. The crazy Sauron. Thorn, please show me the map for one second. Sure, buddy. You wanna see the map? So, this is what is happening so far. Big server, mega server, right? Teal. We are light blue, we are fighting against Teal. And maybe Teal is also fighting against Flame. So right now, light blue versus Teal here. And this front goes to the ring. All right, where was I? I wanted to see one last good battle like a commander or a formation we haven't seen yet like um let's say a tank witch king i'm still looking for that one no this this ain't a tank witch king either oh wow dying baron who could have thought it's the dying baron comp the baron with last resort of course Uh, we have Do we have more 1.0 gear somewhere divide and conquer okay here 1.0 gear fortitude of soldiers last resort maybe the uh, crazy agility Radagast with the wow that is so unique we never get to see Radagast nowadays he with the shirt 1.0 so what he does is healing his allies And healing his allies even more. He specializes in healing. The question is, is it enough? Well, that fight wasn't fair since it wasn't a full army versus a full army. Instead... Yeah, there was never a fight with two full armies happening. The closest to a full army is this one. Um... I'm curious about the healing output. What does a scouter say about the total healing? It's over 9,000. 22,000 actually. Now I want to have a comparison with Galadriel. Galadriel's healing output. Cool. Oh, the second formation of CLF. 
with Dine also. Uh -huh. mm, 1.0 gear. Sauron with the Skull's Male Deafness. I'm so sad that I don't have this gear. Why did I... Why did I change it to 2.0 gear? Do we have any Azru cores? Azru core? Witch King? Is it a tank Witch King? No, it's not. Aha! The commander, the formation, an army with more dwarves. We don't see this every day. Any Azru core players here? Let's quickly check out Dines. Skullhelm. Attunement. Uh -huh. Dine. Divide and conquer. I think we could just stay here and dive even deeper into these reports. I could do this for hours and hours, but let's call it a day now, finally. Yeah, I will just reinforce and that's, say, that's it for today. But in the background, we will continue sending our waves. Let's see how far we can press this. I have no idea. Can you show me Bayo Commander, please? Bayo? You mean a player named Bayo? If I can find him. Hey, oh. You sure he is here? Um Aha, there he is, Feo. Um let's see full army. Here he is, Feo. All right. Let's have a full analysis since Melda requested it. Is Sauron runs a full agility set with troop defense gear. Command, right? Command, there it is. So he has a kind of tanky Sauron, also fast Sauron. White Council, White Rider. A mixed Dine with Shadow. It's a solid report. Dine. Mixed gear. Mixed gear. Full agility. Fortitude. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome, Melda. I think that's a good time to say goodbye to all of you. That was the last analysis of our reports. And um, before I let you go, guys, I know it it may be annoying, but maybe even not. Um, I have now received a pop-up link from NetEase, and I included into each of my videos and a video description, just like here. You get a discount when you use this link to buy gems. That way. You get something, a cheaper price. I get something, a little cut from the win. And we all win. It is a win-win situation. And also a good way of supporting my channel. So if it isn't too much to ask for, please use that pop-up link to support my YouTube channel. That way you are letting me know that I can keep continue doing this YouTube business. And hopefully grow even larger in the future. And yeah, that's... That's it basically for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, don't forget to click on the little like button here. Maybe share the video. That is also pushing YouTube's algorithm. And yeah, I'll 
I'll just see you guys in the next one. I'm going to continue doing my Witch King research now. Ezra, out.